Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? My name is Mark. Welcome to the channel. Um, this is me. This is me in a new space. Wow, super cool, super cool. Just moved into a new place. I will probably do some type of house room tour tour thing once I get everything set up. What's up, MTV? Come on in, you broke mother. I'll probably be on my other channel down below, link in the description. I'm very, very, very excited for all the content and just all the stuff I'm gonna be able to create with the use of this space. If you guys are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into the purpose of this video. Phoebe Bridgers put out a new record. It is called um, And it slaps. So I originally discovered Phoebe Bridgers right, right, right as Stranger in the Alps, right when it came out. Consistently been one of my most played albums since. Such a good listen all the way through. It's so haunting. I just get chills down my spine anytime I listen to it. And I've been a massive Phoebe Bridgers fan ever since. You know, we've heard a couple of projects from her, but I do think she does her best work when she's kind of on her own. Let's just get right into it. Her song is called DVD Menu. It's kind of cool, violin-led, ambient, eerie, weird white noise in the back. Not really much of a song. It's just an intro. I don't really love it as an album intro because I don't really know if it paints anything for the album. But with that said, I absolutely love it as a song intro. I think it transitions gorgeously into Garden Song. The song just makes me wanna like find a random parking lot, pull up, get into the back seat of my car, lay there with my head all the way back, listening to this song and just like sobbing. That's just like the immediate picture I get. Kind of brings me back to that really haunting feeling that I got from Stranger in the Alps. Kind of revisits those same emotions and it's just, it just, makes me feel and anything that makes me feel automatically did something. Phoebe's performance on this track is absolutely immaculate. She does not miss. This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss. Especially in that second verse uh, where, where it grows in the falsetto and she's talking about the dorm room. She's just soaring with those vocals. Also can't go without giving a shout out to Jerome uh, V, I can't, I, I don't know how to pronounce that last name, he is Phoebe's tour manager and he's the one that's doing the backing vocals in the choruses. He's such a calming, beautiful voice for those <laughs> harmonies. I think it really adds a lot to this song. The way it contrasts Phoebe's very, very soft, light, faint vocals. Lastly, there's like some noise sound thing. I know, it's music, it's all noise. I don't really know what it is. I don't know if it's the strumming of the guitars or the picking, just some random rhythmic noise with some effects over it or whatever it might be. It seems like it's not actually a percussion instrument, but it's used percussively to kind of drive this song forward. I think that's just really creative use. For the most part, this is kind of classic Phoebe, what we know and love from her, just even better. The next song on the album is called Kyoto, and this one is easily, easily already one of my songs of the year. I love this song so much. It's just, it's built different. It's built, it's built ram tough, or like ram. I absolutely beg that Phoebe Bridgers writes more songs like this in the future. That synth line is absolutely godsend. Leads the whole track. The drums, those snare hits are so, so, so important. The horns, they complement Phoebe's vocals incredibly well. I am tempted to DM Phoebe Bridgers right now, hit her up and be like, yo, you should start a ska band. This one, honestly, immediately gets pressed into the wedding playlist. I don't care who I marry. I don't care if the one stipulation of us getting married is you don't play any Phoebe Bridger songs at our wedding because fuck it, this shit going right the fuck off. And then the title track comes in next and is like, whoa, slow the fuck down, Kyoto. This is a Phoebe Bridgers album. Who do you think you're talking to right now? Slows it down completely. We have a mostly barren landscape to play with here. This one's kind of similar to Garden Song in the way that it is 
mainly led by one instrumental arpeggio throughout the entire song. Obviously in Garden Song it was that little plucked guitar line. In this case it is a nice piano line. Despite the repetition, what keeps my interest in this track definitely, definitely, definitely is all the vocal effects that are kind of groundhogged in and out, in and out, glazed over her main vocals, then her backing vocals, and they switch something up, and they twist something a little bit, then here, then there. There's a lot of playing being done here. I'd say the execution here is what makes me emotional and makes me feel less than the lyrics. If I'm being honest, I don't think too much about this song until we get to the chorus. I think Phoebe's floating vocals with these very light but deep percussive hits, timpani, bass drum, a good amount of cymbal work in there works very well. I, I don't think I loved it at first listen. It's kind of grown on me a little bit. I just don't think there's enough that like grips my attention and demands me to listen to it. One thing that does do that is the line about the Dodgers fan. I, that one totally grabs my attention every time. The early parts of Chinese Satellites remind me a lot of the last track. The only thing is this song just grows into so much more. The first half of the chorus feels like I'm kind of jogging through like a very dense forest or something. And then that second half, I just suddenly break out into a clearing and it's like a fucking Disney movie. And it's like Phoebe Bridgers is a Disney princess and she's like singing and playing with animals and like, I'm just like, what's going on? I love the strings in this one. And I also really like this song thematically. It kind of touches on Phoebe's wish, desire, hope, um, yearning for there to be something more than just real life. She wants there to be something more, something extra, something just greater to look forward to, I guess. While an uncommon theme to write a song about, I can totally, totally relate. You couldn't have stuck your tongue down the throat of someone who loves you more, so I will wait for the next time you want me, like a dog with a bird at your door. And if I could give you the moon, I would give you the moon. You are sick, and you're married, and you might be dying, but you're holding me like water in your hand. When you saw the dead little bird, you started dying, but you know the killer doesn't understand. Fuck. Phoebe Bridgers says she wrote this in her sleep. Do you think this is a fucking game? Yeah. Do you, you think we can all just write this kind of shit in our sleep? Yeah. Do Fuck off. Fuck off. Gorgeous violin part in this track. And I think my favorite thing here is the creative structure of it. If you're kind of just reading the lyrics, you wouldn't really be able to tell that there's a chorus at all. However, the one repeated line at the end should probably count as a refrain. But nevertheless, lyrically, there's not really a chorus, but musically, there most certainly is a chorus. They just, you know, paint that instrumental chorus with different lyrics each time. Not something you see every day, but definitely something that was consciously decided on and I think pays off pretty well for this song. I See You is the only other kind of sort of mostly upbeat-ish song on the record other than Kyoto. And go figure, I love, love, love this one as well. If you don't feel something when you hear that refrain, I don't know who you are. Those repeated kind of drum crescendos that grow and then cut and then grow and then cut are so good in this track. If you're a work of art, I'm standing too close. I can see the brush strokes, but it makes it so much better the way the percussion works. Cause she's like, if you're a work, Boom of art. Oh, it's just just the fucking the snare hit right there just absolutely makes that and transitions gorgeously into that verse. Oh, so good. The next song is called Graceland 2. And I'm gonna pause the video, guys. Let's be real here. Black Lives Matter, defund the police. Let's replace every Confederate statue with a statue of Lucy Dacus. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, let me know if you guys are on board. Her backing vocals in this track, ooh, not to mention Julian Baker. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. Phoebe Bridgers, of course. Let's replace Mount Rushmore with Boy Genius. Just saying, just saying, drop a like if you're down. If we learned anything from Stranger in the Alps, it's that Phoebe Bridgers, her pen game 
is crazy. She's able to write these lyrics and tell these stories. You didn't even think you felt that way until you heard the song and you're like, oh shit, that kind of makes sense. And it makes you feel these things. You didn't even know you, you felt, and then it just burns you on the inside because Fee Bridgers writes a depressing song about it, and you're like, fuck, what's wrong with me? What, I didn't, I, I didn't mean to feel. What is this? Incredible, incredible album closer. So big, so grandiose, so climactic. And the ending of this song is just so cool. It kind of reminds me of the Wonder Years with I Just Want to Sell Out My Funeral. How you bring a lot of themes and kind of interpolate some sounds from prior in the album. All the features get one last shot in these gang vocals that are very broad. You can definitely, definitely tell the voices apart here. The song just kind of starts decomposing in itself. Horn parts kind of start slowly falling apart, but kind of keeping this jazz feel that I really like. Vocals start getting more and more distorted, turning to screams. The end is near, the end is near. Admittedly, I think if the song was just like a random single, pretty good track, I'm like, oh yeah, sure, that was, that was, a, that was all right. But knowing the context of the record, knowing that it is this grandiose closer of a song, knowing everything about it as far as bringing some themes back from the rest of the album, bringing some sounds back, I, I really like it. I think it's a great closer for the record. This is a dope, dope, dope release. This is well worth, I think, everybody's time, whether you're a fan of Phoebe Bridgers or have never heard of her before. I think Phoebe's composing has really taken a leap forward. These songs are complex, both lyrically and musically throughout. Some of my favorites released this year. Phoebe really can do no wrong on this album. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. Even some of the songs that came off quite honestly, a little boring to me first listen, have gradually grown on me as I've developed more appreciation for the overall work and the overall picture being painted here. Personally, not as good as Sitta, but with that said, that's one of my favorite albums ever, so I don't know if that's, you know, I'm not trying to take away anything from this record at all. I'm thinking like a 7.7 .7 maybe, 7.8, not quite an eight. Let me know how you guys felt down below in the comments. You've listened to my thoughts. Do you guys agree with certain things I said? Do you guys disagree? Am I stupid? Am I smart? Am I cool? Am I dumb? Let me know what you thought of this record down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this review and want to see more, go ahead and drop a like. Consider subscribing. Uh, please support Phoebe Bridgers. She's amazing. She's amazing. She's amazing. Go listen to this record. Read the lyrics. Feel this record. Allow it to hit you right here in the chest. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the channel. As always, remember to do fun things and to stay beautiful. Thank you.